So for today's episode, I'm gonna try my hand out of making a messenger bag out of leather and wood. The overall design is this one here made by Middle Mist Red and it's inspired by the new Spider-Man movie, No Way Home. Now, I have never made a messenger bag before and have very little idea what I'm doing. So enjoy the show while I try to level up this skill. Okay, so for starters, I think the best place to start is gonna be those wooden sides. For that purpose, I've secured this nice piece of oak that is six inches wide by a half inch thick. Now, since I need to somehow carve that spider image into it, I tried to find one that had as straight a grain as possible, just so my Dremel tool isn't kind of dancing around while I'm trying to do my thing. Speaking of which, to try to make sure that I make this thing as perfect as I can, I'm going to employ the Cricut cutter to go ahead and cut a template out for me. This is just the easiest way I can think of to get the design I need to be perfect. Plus, I just love the way it peels away once it's done. It's so satisfying to watch. And that worked out well. As you can see, I not only have the overall shape I'm going for and obviously the image, but I've also included these little slits here that are going to act as the points on my sides that my straps are going to connect to. I think. We'll see. Using this, I'm just going to kind of align it onto the board here and then trace it out so I can make sure I get all the shapes I need where I need them. And these I've just decided to cut with my bandsaw, which is still the best purchase I've made in a long time. For real, I don't know why it took me so long to break down and buy one, but hot damn, I'm glad I did. All right, so cool. With these in the shape that I want them to be, I now need to cut out those little strap slits. I figure the best way to do this is to use my drill press and just make a bunch of holes in a line where I need it. Then with the bulk of that material removed, I can just kind of go back in with a rasp and smooth it all out. Okay, so I have an idea. Originally, I was gonna trace this spider design on here and try to carve it out. That's all well and good, but I think it might look a little bit messy if I do that because it's hard to get the carving exactly perfect. But I do have the Cricut cutter and some veneer. Let's see how this works. Okay, look at how dope these are. What? That's gonna look sick. They're perfect and they fit right on the wood. I, I couldn't be more excited. I think this is gonna work out. Okay, so before I glue these together, I decided to add in my colors. For this, I'm actually using leather dye just because I couldn't find any wood stains that were rich enough for the color I was looking for. This is a bit of an experiment, but it totally seems to work out. The colors are super true and exactly what I was looking for. Not only that, but I can be positive that these are going to match my leather color perfectly because it's the leather dye. All the pieces are coming together. With those looking just so slick, I'm adding a liberal amount of glue to the back of my veneers and then carefully placing them onto the sideboards. To keep them flat, I'm placing them into my book press and putting a good amount of pressure on them then just leaving them to cure overnight. All right, cool, time to check on how these came out. Okay, look at how these came out. They look perfect. This was a really good idea. I was gonna, yeah. I could not get it that perfect if I carved it, so the fact that it just, it looks this good out the gate, I'm so excited. To seal these up, I'm just hitting them with a semi-gloss clear coat. I also sand in between each coat with some steel wool just to get it as smooth as possible. This gives me this really beautiful low luster finish that I am just obsessed with. So good. Okay, I think I can safely say those sides are dealt with. I'm very happy with those. So now we can move on to trying to add the leather to them. Now for my leather, I am using this beautiful piece of six ounce veg tan leather that my brother actually got for me for my birthday. Thank you, Jeff. I, and I'm sure the rest of the skill monkeys, really appreciate it. Now to figure out how much of it I need, I'm just gonna use this tailor's tape and wrap it around the side till it's about where I think it should be. To get its width, I'm just gonna kind of stand up the sides here and see how far apart I think they look good. 16 inches, in case you're curious. And with those measurements down, it's just a matter of cutting the whole thing out with an X-Acto knife to those specifications. And testing it out, I can already see this is gonna look great. Okay, so that last little bit with the veneer worked so well, I decided I wanna try my luck at something else I've been meaning to try. So I was thinking that this bag would look really cool if the outside of the leather was the black color that's shown in the picture here, uh, but the inside was like a red to match what those sides are. So I'm gonna try to line that black leather with a red leather on the back. I've never done this before, but in principle, Seems like it'll be simple, so let's give it a try. 
I figure the best way to do this is to just put the piece that I cut on top of the other one and then cut that inside piece slightly bigger so that I could trim it down to be perfect later on. All right, so with those two pieces ready, I think the best course of action is actually to go ahead and tool my leather now, just because I don't want those tool marks to show up on the other side of the leather once it's finished. To get this done, I'm just copying over Middle Miss Red's spider image onto some baking paper to use as my template. Then I do the standard thing of wetting down the leather, placing the template over the spot I want it, and then tracing it into the leather with my stylus. And once that's in place, I cut the whole thing out with my swivel knife and go back over it again with my bevel tool to really make the image pop. And I have to give a shout out to Middle Miss Red on this one. This looks so slick. I just love how the spider is kind of positioned and the pointy legs and really cool. I love that. Real quick, if you're new to this channel or leatherworking in general, a lot of what I just kind of threw at you seemed like just jargon. You have no idea what I'm talking about. If that's the case, check out this playlist here. It kind of walks you through all of the steps I've done to kind of level up our skills to this point. All right, so from here, I'm going to go ahead and wrap the leather around the side one more time just so I can figure out where the back of it is and exactly where I want my little spider web thing to sit. Then I do the same thing as before, just marking out where it goes, cutting it with my swivel knife, and then tooling it into place. So that looking super badass, I'm gonna go ahead and add some color, making the main body USMC black, and then the inside with just a basic red. I apparently have made a mistake. <laughs> So I've had this little bottle of red here for quite some time because I just frankly never really use red for my projects. I usually end up using like an ox blood or something. Now the amount that was left in here should have been plenty to go on the piece of leather, but I don't know if it's because I used the sponge and the sponge just kind of soaked it up and it dried on it, but it wasn't nearly enough to cover everything. So now I have to run to the store and buy some more. And I'm hoping that when I put it back over the dye that's already on there, it doesn't leave it like streaky and spotty and nasty looking. All right, I not only picked up a new bottle of dye, but I also picked up some of this lamb's wool to act as my dauber. So the wool totally covers great. I like using this for this application. The dye job though, did come out a little streaky looking. Better than I thought it would, but the dye that I put on initially that had dried just left us with darker areas after I went over it again. With all that in mind, this is gonna be on the inside, so I'm not too worried about it. Also, it's a big old piece of leather and it feels disrespectful to just kind of throw it away because I made a mistake. So I am gonna go ahead and use this. I think in the future though, I'll probably buy like a pre-dyed piece that's already the color that I want. Okay, so with that almost catastrophe out of the way, it's time to stick these two pieces together. To do this, I'm just covering the back of both pieces with some barge contact cement. And once it's had some time to get tacky, I carefully place them together and press down hard to make sure everything bonds correctly. And this is where the inside being larger than the outside comes in handy. Now I'm able to cut the larger piece flush, making them look like they fit together perfectly. And I'm honestly quite proud of how this came out. The die job isn't perfect, but these things still look really cool together. To make it look even better, I just went ahead and treated the edges by hitting it with my edge beveler, dyeing the resulting bare leather left over, and then slicking and sealing those edges up with gum tragacan. Finally, I used some Pro Resist just to give the whole thing a nice shine and a protective coating. Okay, I think we're ready to put all of this together, the sides and the leather and everything. First, I need to assess exactly where the leather is gonna land on those sides so I can figure out kind of where the opening is, right? So to do this, I just kind of put the sides together and used a straight edge to mark where I think the beginning and the end of the glue up will be. Then I just roll the wood along the edge of my leather to mark out exactly where I need the glue to sit. Then again, I just spread some barge cement on the wood and the leather for my two to bond together. With that said, I carefully position the two into place, letting the contact cement do its thing while I roll my wooden sides to shape my leather around it. Okay, so this is sticking pretty good, but not awesome. I feel like it's starting to come apart a little bit. So I'm gonna actually tack this on here with some pin nails, like right now. I knew this was gonna be a possibility, and at first I really didn't wanna do this because it wasn't really the look I was going for. But actually, I really like how this came out. It kind of gives the whole thing a real classy, like steamer trunk kind of feel, and I dig it. And at this point, we have a bag, which is amazing to me. <laughs> But now I, I need to put a handle on the top of the thing, and I, I think I've worked out how to do it. My plan is to cut a strap about eight inches long. 
into which I cut these little half moon shapes out of each side about a quarter of the way up the strap. This is just gonna allow me to fit these inch wide D-rings so that they don't fight with the leather. Now with those cut, I can just kind of slide the D-ring into the place so that they fall into those little indents. Then add barge cement to the whole rest of the strap aside from where those D-rings sit. If I plan this out right, each side should be able to fold in and just touch each other right in the center of that strap, locking those D-rings into place. Said whole assembly will form a handle. I am proud of that. That was just kind of off the top of my dome piece there, so I'm happy with it. That being said, it's kind of ugly. To remedy this, I cut this piece of leather three inches by five inches with the thought that I could just kind of wrap it around the handle and hide that seam. I also think it'd be cool if I add maybe like a baseball stitch in, in red, uh, just to kind of add to the whole theme and make kind of a cool design. So with this in mind, I'm just gonna lay down where I want my lace holes to go and then punch them out with my forked hole puncher. Once that's all straight, I'm gonna make everything their respective colors. And I think that that like underlying piece would look great red and then the top black, just so you kind of have like the black handle part and the, the part sticking out like that pop of red kind of goes with the overall look of the bag, I think. Then to hold it all together, like I said, I'm just going with a simple baseball stitch with a red wax thread. This stitch is super easy to do and looks really good. If you don't know how to do it yet, you can check out this video here where I cover it. Also, sorry about all the wardrobe changes. This has taken a couple of days to do, and actually while I was waiting for this to die up, I went and grabbed some food and it rained. It rained real hard. <laughs> but check this thing out. I made a friggin' handle. I've never made one of these before and I can't believe how good this looks. This came out so good. Now to attach it to the bag, I'm just gonna cut out these three inch little strips here, which I'll wrap around the D-ring and lock into place with a rivet. Then I secure the whole assembly to the top of my bag with more rivets. And again, look at how good this looks. It's a bag. It has a handle, it opens and closes. It's a bag. I really like how this came out. This is like, this looks good. It feels good. Sorry, I'm just real excited about this. As much as I like the handle though, I definitely want my bag to have like a strap on it. So first I have to figure out how I want it to connect to the little slits here on the side. So here's what I came up with. I'm gonna use these little four inch strips of leather and add another D ring to it. These will just slide into those slots and then lock it into place with a rivet on the inside. This worked and now I have two connection points to attach my strap through. Okay, so for my strap, I went ahead and cut this one and a half inch wide strip that I dyed black and tapered the ends down to one inch to be able to accommodate these little clasps that I can use to connect to our D-rings on the bag. I also went ahead and dyed this two ounce piece of leather red, thinking that I'm gonna use the same trick of backing the strap so that it has the same kind of like pop of red that the main body of the bag has. So I just kind of did the same thing of gluing the back of both pieces, carefully attaching them together, and then cutting them down to shape to make sure they're perfect. And this whole thing honestly came out looking really good. Like that black with that pop of red and the way these attach looks really professional. And look how they connect to the bag. Oh my God, I love it. Check that out. Oh, it's so cool. All right, the last thing we have to do is add a clasp onto this. That way we can keep it closed so I can actually use the handle without the thing just kind of opening up on me. For the clasp, I have this cool little hook and keeper assembly that I thought would look pretty neat with the whole theme. Now I had to be pretty creative to attach this thing by clamping a two by four to my table so that I had something to set my rivets against. But when it was done, check this out! Oh my God, it's so cool! I was flying by the seat of my pants with this one, but you cannot tell me this thing doesn't look dope. Like, I love it so much. Now I could put like a partition in the middle here or something, but I kind of like it being almost like an overnight bag so I can fit a bunch of bulky items in here. But for my first bag, I'm, I'm ecstatic with how this looks. This thing is dope. Now I love this so much and I want to give a shout out to these amazing people who make it possible. Without my Patreon members supporting me, this channel couldn't grow and I wouldn't be able to do all this stuff. So I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And a special shout out to our newest high tier level Patreon members. Rich Gibson and Iziferous. I think I butchered that, but you know who you are. Thank you so much for joining the fam and helping to support this channel. I really appreciate it.
If you like what I do here and want to see the channel grow, why don't you consider joining my Patreon? Link in the description below. Finally, if there's something you'd like to see me do, why don't you leave it in the comment section and I will add it to the list. All right, I gotta get going. Amazon just released the previews for The Wheel of Time, and I'm going frame by frame tonight to see if there's anything cool I can make from it. I love The Wheel of Time. In the meantime, though, keep leveling up, you. Hey, thank you for staying to the end credits, you rock. If you liked this video, why don't you try out some of these down here that I think you'd like too. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and you know, ring the bell so you know when I release new content. Go ahead, go ahead, push the button now. Oh wait.